Good morning, everyone. Welcome to CWM. Today is April 20th. Uh, as we announced, today we want to talk about a case study, um, making offers and counters in this strong seller's market. Uh, there are a few things that uh, we want to cover today, very important um, uh, issues with um, making offer and making counters and try to uh, uh, try to win uh, for the final bidding. Okay, this, this case is a three bedroom. As you can see this picture, three bedroom, two full bath and one uh, half bath. Uh, it's a townhouse um, complex in Palisade Park. And the listing price was $600,000. And listing period was April 13 through uh, October 13 this year. And tax was 7,448 and built year is 1980s. And um, it's a reasonably uh, renovated. And again, market situation is a still strong seller market. We'll see why it's a still st a strong seller market. <clears throat> okay, so this is the uh, listed property uh, information. And uh, let's take a look at a buyer uh, trying to make an offer. And that buyer's financial situation is Following, uh, the buyer is a single uh, with uh, about 150,000 annual salary and has only about $30,000 cash in his hands. And he was, uh, he's a first home buyer. And he, but he's qualified to get a loan up to $620,000. So, <clears throat> Uh, he can get uh, he can get the mortgage without any problem, okay? Up to six hundred twenty thousand okay, dollars. remember the listing price is six hundred thousand dollars, and he want to purchase. Essentially, uh, he want to purchase this house with the thirty thousand uh, dollars down payment, and um, but. With this $30,000 down payment, probably most likely he cannot get this deal because it's a strong seller market. Now, of course, we expect multiple offers in this case. And uh, it turned out, it turned out uh, 15 offers they received as we sort of expected expected uh, it was a strong steel sellers market by the way this is have this happened uh, like you know within a week uh, period of time from uh, 13th uh, of uh, april and so what um, what this uh, a buyer um, came up with is is the following Okay, he's gonna offer, uh, this buyer will offer at $650,000. And on the paper, on the contract, he's gonna write down 25% down payment. And obviously uh, contract deposit is $30,000. Indeed, he has only $30,000 between you and me. Okay, now, <clears throat> Of course, uh, he knows it's a strong seller's market and uh, uh, already expected uh, uh, really uh, a lot of uh, competitions. So he decided um, no mortgage contingency and second, no inspection contingency except the structure and environmental issues and plus no contingency on appraisal. Well, no contingency on appraisal means if later on the appraiser uh, came out lower than whatever um, 
agree the sale price, still he will continue without further negotiation. That's what uh, actually means. And uh, also he doesn't have any string to sell his own home. So no contingency on buy your own home sale. So this way, okay, no contingency on mortgage inspection appraisal and um, he doesn't need to sell his own house. So he thought he could make pretty strong offer and hopefully he can get this uh, uh, going through this bidding war and he can uh, win. Okay, that's his sort of tactics. But we're gonna talk about uh, some issues with this offer. But the point is here, he has only in his hand $30,000. Okay, that's all he can do a uh, down payment. Whatever that's gonna be um, contract deposit or not. But on the, um, the offer sheet, which is um, in the sales contract form, he put down 25%, but he jacked up the um, offer price at 650, so $50,000 more than listing price. Now, <clears throat> what about seller side of situation? Okay, seller receives the received total 15 offers in this case. And the seller's agent uh, is very thorough, is a very uh, experienced agent and examined each offer thoroughly, okay? So until here with his 15 different offers, still by a thought, he may have a very good chance because it's $50,000 more and 25% um, down. But plus all the, the basically practically no contingencies. Okay, so um, <clears throat> he thought he has a very fair chance to win in this bidding. Okay, but, but this is the uh, critical moment. The seller agent asked this offer, the buyer, to submit proof of fund of 25% down payment. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we got some issues here. Indeed, the buyer's situation is in his hands only $30,000. But on the paper, he put the 25% uh, down payment because he talked to his um, mortgage officer and uh, he submitted all his income documentation and his credit score. And the loan officer said, you can get the mortgage up to $620,000 without any problem. Okay, that is why he decided, the buyer decided to offer $650,000. So indeed, um, uh, he can, uh, it, it actually what's gonna happen is $30,000, uh, he's gonna uh, down and he's gonna get that $620,000 loan and then he can close at $650,000. That was his mind, his plan, but, but seller's agent look at the um, contract form uh, of uh, offer and he saw 25% down. So he asked, send the proof of fund of this 25% this, uh, down payment. Now buyer got stuck. So you can imagine what's gonna happen now but obviously the buyer could not present uh, proof of fund, of course, because he has only 30,000 in his hands. But typical situation, um, 
it may go through without being asked present proof of fund because it's a pretty good number and uh, 25% is sort of difficult and uh, no contingency whatsoever. So seller point of view, hey, it's a good deal. So they could move on. They could accept and move on. Then uh, seller point of view, he can turn back and he can talk to mortgage uh, officer and he can get the $620,000 loan and they can close. Of, of course, he has to prepare um, closing cost. Let's say the closing cost is 7,000 to 8,000. So at least he can get that money. But in this strong seller's market, and in fact, Seller is also these days, a seller agent or a seller also experiencing a lot of uh, this kind of situation. And also they might expect this kind of uh, sort of inflated um, numbers on their sales contract. So that's why Typically, usually real estate, uh, residential real estate transaction, when you send offer, if everything is okay, usually they accept without asking a proof of fund. But in this case, seller asks proof of fund. So once they ask proof of fund, then this deal can go further. Understood. Okay. Um, <clears throat> So a uh, few points we want to discuss is what about buyer's tactic? First of all, is it, uh, we see something strange, right? First of all, can we do that? In his hand is only $30,000, but on the, uh, on the offer, um, you just put the 25% down payment. Can we do that? Well, yeah, there's some issue, okay? If a seller just accept it, let's assume, and then if um, the buyer could get the uh, mortgage up to uh, whatever the number, 620,000, then it may be okay. And they close and then it's okay. Well, <clears throat> Though we might have some issue in terms of uh, code of ethics, right? Whether we, we could uh, practice this kind of uh, uh, tactic, okay? That might be an issue, code of ethics, because it's uh, an honest issue, right? A code of ethics, uh, we, we uh, talked about the uh, integrity and uh, honest. We, need, we, we have to be honest to, to all parties, not only his, um, uh, the, uh, the, the agent's client, but agent's uh, customer. Also, we have to uh, be uh, honest. Okay, so and that might be uh, an issue. Well, this is a situation, I mean, the practical life, okay? in terms of a practical life, uh, I often uh, make this kind of a, talk about this kind of exam, um, the example, uh, there's a red light and uh, you're a driver. So typically red, red light, in front of a red light, you have to stop. But you just pass through red light. Every time you will get the ticket, Automatically, no, as is no. You may go through red light without get the ticket. However, whether you want to do it all the time, no. You need to stop at the red light. In this kind of a situation. So if you pass the red light, and yes, you can just drive and uh, you can uh, arrive home safely. And uh, you can, you know, continue uh, live your life. Okay. 
So that kind of a situation. So uh, buyer's tactic uh, may uh, have this issue. Okay, now, what about seller's strategy in this case? Well, first of all, buyer's the tactic was everything uh, he put um, basically no contingency on pretty much everything. Is it also sound tactic? Well, <clears throat> you have to know what you're doing. In, in the agent point of view, buyer agent, needs to know what he is doing and what she's doing exactly because it's very risky. If you uh, waive a mortgage contingency, you might uh, forfeit the contract deposit, okay? It might. And um, inspection also, uh, there, there could be tons of different uh, inspection issues. Of course, you make exception to uh, structural and environmental issues, but also, you need to be very careful. And the appraisal issue is even more complicated. Okay, later on, appraisal came uh, below the listing price. Then you need to know how to handle the situation, uh, including buyer's remorse and uh, also uh, buyer's uh, financial capability, whether the buyer can uh, make up the, the difference, okay? So a lot of uh, situation you have to uh, think about. So whether it's worth to go through this dangerous endeavor, very risky endeavor, okay? So uh, in terms of agent, you need to explain this kind of this situation very um, carefully. And also buyer's point of view, uh, we have uh, also public listeners here. Uh, buyer's point of view, yes, to get the house is important, but also your risk, um, you have to analyze what is your risk, what is your bottom line, uh, whether you uh, comfortably uh, forfeit your contract deposit. Uh, nobody wanna do that possibly. So what about seller's tactic? Uh, in this case, the seller was very smart. Typically, as you know, seller side doesn't ask uh, proof of fund for the residential transaction, okay? But as the residential market is heating up, there are multiple offers and every offer, let's say among these 15 offers for this house, every buyer will think, how can I win this bid, right? So they, they put a lot of uh, uh, sort of tactics, sort of uh, um, uh, ideas they're gonna throw in. So seller's point of view, also they need very experienced uh, agent. In this case, yes, seller agent was very smart. Um, if, uh, I mean, the, the more, uh, the higher uh, uh, offer price, they have to go through really uh, well. Because if buyer, certain buyer has some weakness, then they want to put maybe a much higher offer price to get the, um, the steal. So, um, seller, sort of seller agent, rather, knew this potential situation. And um, <clears throat> yes, yeah, so we talk about the, uh, the moral dilemma, um, the buyer's moral dilemma, or rather buyer's agent's moral dilemma. Okay, 항발로 조금 정리해 드리면요. 지금 팔팍에 있는 타운하우스 케이스, 요거 리스팅 프라이스는 600,000. Uh, listing price to uh, uh, listing listing thing is our ships are mill paru jane de quill text the hago bill to you can turn a grown town house in there you buy a sangwangi single menzo and so on will income creso loan to him with the opta or makaji look she be makaj on him with the opta and bunjen down pay go up so some mumble back and got it. 그래서 바이어가 이제 머리를 짜낸 게 
오케이, 65만에 업로드를 하고 5만 불더 올려서 다운 페이를 25%로 쓰고 어, 단 이제 컨트랙트 까지는 3만 밖에 없으니까 컨트랙트 까지 3만 불 쓰고 그 대신 전부 다 아, 웨이브를 해버렸단 말이죠. 음. It's pretty dangerous. 그 셀러 사이드는 어떻게 됐냐 하면 결국은 15개 업고가 들어왔고요. 어? 이거 한 within a week 얘기해요 지금. 어, 여전히 셀러즈 마켓이다. 그리고 프라이스 레인지가 아시지만 한 60만 불 정도. 그래서 셀러 에이전트가 보니까 어, 굉장히 떨어올리 한 어퍼 하나씩 하나씩 전부 다 점검을 한것 같아요. 그리고 이 어퍼를 딱 보니까 그, 그 상황 점검 이렇게 엑스펙트를 해볼 때에 아마도 650면 은 어, 굉장히 그 어, 위너 사이클에는 분명히 들어간 것 같아요. 아마도 제일 높지 않았나 싶어요. 그런데 어, 물어본 게 25%에 대한 펀드 풀을 보느라 이렇게 에, 연락이 온 거죠. 근데 보통의 경우는 레지던시의 경우는 펀드 풀을 요구하는 경우는 그렇게 많지 않아요. 어, 그냥 그 컨트랙이 다돼 있고 그러면 프리어프루블 가지고 주로 하죠. 프리어프루블에 이제 다 기록을 하니까 단 프리어프루블은 아시지만은 바이어가 얼마든지 얘기할 수 있죠. 어, 모기지 론 오피스하고 물론 론 오피스도 그렇게 하면은 안 되지만. 어, 그러나 이제 이 경우 이제 그렇게 됐는데 결국은 펀드 투르포 어, 펀드를 보내지 못하게 된 거고 그러니까 결국은 이 딜은 어, 거기에 이제 비딩에 못 들어가게 된 거죠. 아무튼 어, 그래서 지금 바이어가 어, 손에 3만 불 가지고 있는데 다운 페이를 25만 불, 25%라고 쓸 쓰면은 어떻게 되겠느냐 여기 모를 딜레마가 있다. 물론 아시겠지만. 이게 아무 문제 없이 프로포 펀드 요청을 안 했다 그러면 셀러가 그리고 셀러가 이 어퍼를 받아들였다면 그러면 또 문제는 실질적으로는 없었어요. 되돌아서 모기지 브로커하고 해서 62만을 론을 하고 3만 불 다운하면 클로징은 되니까 물론 클로징 코스트 한 100불 더 보태면 클로징은 성공적으로 끝나겠죠. 오케이. 그러나 여기 모를 딜레마를 우리가 생각해야 된다. 어, 코드 베틱의 이 에이전트는 모든 파티에게 어니스트한 게 있죠. 어니스트. 그래서 어, 그 문제에 에, 걸리게 된다. 그다음에 바이어의 리스크를 어, 잘 이제 설명을 하고 이러한 어, 작전으로 나가야 된다. 어, 근데 셀러 측이 상당히 잘한것 같아요. 모르죠. 잘 했다고 생각을 해야 되겠죠. 그죠? 어, 사실은 이제 리얼 라이프에서 우리가 굉장히 에, 딜할 때는 정말 우리가 모를 딜레마를 상당히 많이 경험을 하게 되죠. 왜냐하면 셀러 에이전트는 블락을 이렇게 해서 어, 했다고 하는데 그래서 아마 그더 낮은 거로 받았을 수도 있겠죠. 그리고 더 안전하게. 어, 그러면 안전하고 대신 더 어, 세일즈 프라이스는 낮은 쪽으로 가서 클로징을 할수 있겠죠. 어, 그래서 결과는 어, 사실은 셀러에게 조금 돈이 덜간 거가 되지만 어, 그러나 그 가는 길을 세이프하게 갔다라고는 할수 있겠죠. 어, 그래서 이제 그런 이제 포텐셜 이슈들이 있는데 어, 아마 지금 이 상황에서는 아직도 우리가 조금 더 뉴스 점검해 보겠지만 아직도 어, 셀러 마켓이다. 그리고 아직도 가격이 안 내려올 이유들이 있다. 그거 우리 뉴스 쪽에서 좀 점검을 해볼 텐데 어, 혹시 지금 뮤트, 언뮤트 하시고 뭐 커멘트나 퀘션 있어요? 한 2, 3분 남았는데 지금 어, 올 뮤트는 안돼 있는 것 같아요. 그래서 아직도 어, 이게 이제 within a week 얘기니까 아직도 어, 셀러 마켓, 로컬, 로컬 마켓이 우리 로컬 마켓은 아직도 셀러 마켓이다. 어, 여기저기서 여기저기서 이제 물건이 많이 나올 거고 가격이 떨어질 것이다. 어, 지금 이자율이 올라가면서 그러나 이자율이 올라가더라도 
만약 인플레, 인플레이션이 어느 정도 유지되고 하면 어, 지금 집을 살려고 하는 디맨드는 계속 유지가 된다. 특히 투자자들의 경우에 그것도 우리가 뉴스 시간에 어, 좀 커버를 할 거고요. 한 가지 질문 있는데요. 네. 응, 그 바이어는 자기가 뭐 20% 다운하고 그렇게 많이 그 가격을 올려서 써냈는데 그럴 경우에 그 어프레이저를 할때 계약서가 들어가잖아요. 네네. 근데 그 사람들은 그 계약서도 가라로 고치려고 그랬었을까요? 아니 계약서 자체를 그냥 써낸 거죠. 25%로. 음, 아니 그런데 실제로는 은행에 어, 은행이 어플라이 할 때는 음. 이 사람들이 62만 불뭐 이렇게 해야 되잖아요. 그렇죠? 그렇죠. 그거는 모기지 브로커하고 벌써 얘기가 됐고 그러니까 어프레이저리 낮게 나와도 음. 예를 들어서 지금 어, 솔드 세일 프라이스는 65만인데 어프레이저는 음. 60만 밖에 안 나왔다고 하자고요. 음. 네. 어, 그런데 론을 그냥 노메로완 62만을 해버릴 거니까. 그렇지만 항상 계약서라는 게 들어가지 않아. 네, 계약서. 아, 25% 들었다. 음. 네, 그건 상관없어. 아니, 그게 그러니까, 그러니까 어차피 이 딜은 깨졌으니까 뭐 상관이 없어졌지만 그렇죠. 예전에, 예, 예전에 2008년 전에도 이런 사람이 있어갖고 음. 난리가 나고 문제가 생기고 그랬던 거를 본 적이 있거든요. 네. 근데 그, 이제 옛날에는 네. 문제가 조금 이제 뉴스도 나오지만 옛날에는 네. 이제 이렇게 해서 은행에 들어갈 거 아니겠어요, 그죠? 은행에 네. 들어갔을 때에 62만을 론을 해줄 수 없는 사람을 론을 해준 음. 게 문제였어요. 금융 위기 때. 음. 음. 지금 음. 이 경우는 그게 아니라 인컴은 음. 충분해. Way more than 어그 62만을 어, 론을 충분히 할 수가 있어요. 그러니까 케이스는 조금 달라요. 음. 이제 왜 이게 이런 사, 사태가 나냐면은 비딩 때문에 그래요. 그러니까 옛날 같이 이제 비딩이 없는 마켓을 치자고요. 그냥 평, 평범한 마켓을 치면 어, 충분히 3만 불 다운 한다 그러고 대신 가격을 뭐좀 올린다든지 어, 그러나 모기지 전혀 문제 없다. 모기지 브로커가 이제 프리 어프로블 해서 진행을 해도 문제가 없을 거예요. 단지 문제는 지금 이 마켓 상황인 거예요. 이게 엄청난 비딩이 붙을 거다. 그러니까 어떻게 이 비딩에서 이겨야 되는데 뭐안 이기면 아무 소용이 없는 거잖아요. 그죠? 비딩이라는 게. 그러니까 이기기 위한 택틱을 만들려다 보니까 다운 패드 올려라, 올려라. 어, 컨디션시는 다 그냥 까라. 속편 말로. 이렇게 작전이 나온다 이런 거죠. 그러니까 그런 작전에 대비해서 또 셀러는 셀러대로 또 그런 또 카운터 작전이 나올 수 있다는 거죠. 펀드 프로브를 딱꼭 받는다 라든지 그러니까 어 우리가 전체가 다 이제 알면서 어 과연 이제 이 비딩 상 비딩 사, 사항에 들어갔을 때에 어느 편이냐 따라서 어떻게 준비를 해야 되느냐. 뭐 이런 것들이 이제 상당히 변수가 많고 어, 그러다 그럴 보니까 경우에도 그럴 경우에도 모기지 컨틴전시는 있는 거죠. 지금 이 경우는 모기지 컨틴전시를 없앴잖아요. 노 컨틴전시. 아 그렇죠. 어. 그러면은 셀러 입장에서는 그 계약금만 받으면 문제는 없네요. 그렇죠. 그러니까 어, 그러니까. 음. 일단은 모기지 컨디션스가 없기 때문에 없기 때문에 음, 사실 셀러는 음. 비교적 안전하다고 볼수 있죠. 네. 음, 그러나 음. 이제 더 철저하게 하기 위해서 어, 음. 이 펀드 프로브를 요구를 하게 된 거죠. 오케이. Okay. I think that's it for uh, today's mini seminar. Uh, I hope um, you can think of your own case or either your public or uh, agent. Uh, and also another point is still locally is a strong seller's market. Okay, see you all next week. Thank you.